हेलो क्लास वेलकम टू कनेक्टेड हेलो ऑल लेट्स लर्न ऑन यू लेसन टूडे हुज नेम इज मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज लेट्स बिगिन विद नोइंग द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लेसन विच आर टू डिस्कस द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द नेशनल इकोनॉमी टू अक्वायर अ नॉलेज ऑफ वेरियस इंडस्ट्रीज इन गोवा एंड इंडिया टू कॉम्प्रीहेंड द कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल पोल्यूशन एंड टू डेवलप मैप स्किल्स आफ्टर स्टडिंग दिस लेसन द स्टूडेंट विल गेन द फॉलोइंग आउटकम्स अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज लर्न वेरियस इन्फ्लुएंसिंग लोकेशन ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज अप्रिशिएट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द मेजर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज इन गोवा एंड इंडिया अंडरस्टैंड द टाइप ऑफ पोल्यूशन एंड इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन आर इन्वायरमेंट Let's begin with introducing this lesson. By definition, manufacturing means the creation of goods, services or the utility which satisfies human wants and needs. It includes processes of converting raw materials into finished consumable products. It involves four factors of production that is land, labor, capital and enterprise. By land, it means all the natural resources and the location. By labor, it means the exertion of human effort. both skilled and unskilled capital refers to money equipment machines and materials and the demand means the current need for the product entrepreneur that a business skills on the other hand are the managerial and occupational capabilities of the person now we are going to understand the importance of manufacturing industries The economic strength of any country is determined by the development of the manufacturing industries. Manufacturing is the backbone of every economy for the following reasons. Manufacturing contributes to the modernization of agriculture. These industries provide alternative employment in the second and third sectors. Industrial development is the basic step to eliminate unemployment and poverty in our country. Industrialization helps reduce internal regional differences. Exports of manufactured products expand trade and commerce. Exports of finished products receive higher prices and foreign exchange in the world market. Industries in agriculture are the hands of any economy. Agriculture gives uncooked substances to the industries and the industries give agricultural inputs like fertilizers, machines, pumps, pipes, etc. This facilitates to boom agricultural productiveness each in phases of fine and quantity. With the ever converting global scenario, it is vital that each of those sectors enhance their performance if you want to compete with the sector markets. Manufacturing has to head a step past self-sufficiency so they may be par with global standards. Industries are established to generate a variety of goods. The location of an industry is determined by a number of factors including raw material, availability, energy, transportation, market labor, government policy and the sort of items to be produced. The industries are positioned in the best workable site to maximize their revenues based on the cost benefit ratio of procuring these components. Certain industries are established away from markets. while others are built close to markets some are built near raw material producing locations while others are built near energy sources and some are built near or along key transportation arteries government policies and their enticing concessions and subsidies can sometimes determine the establishment of industries in remote areas agglomeration economy refers to when a large number of industries are concentrated in a small area The location of any industries is based on two factors: physical factors. Industries that consume large amounts of bulky raw materials are typically positioned close to the source of these materials. Because of advancements in the transportation and communication networks, the location of raw materials is no longer always determined by the sort of raw materials. For instance, consider the iron and steel industries. Energy. Coal mines were the first source of energy for industry. Coal fields have been mostly displaced by hydroelectric power and oil which are more easily distributed. 
for energy intensive industries a reliable power supply is essential smelting electrical and telecom sectors for example are traditional locals transportation industries require a good transportation system to allow for the import and export of raw materials and completed goods this activity has become more efficient and cost effective as a result of recent advancements in transportation the location of the vehicle industry is now determined by the availability of viable transportation and industrial areas have consequently scattered from the traditional locations market accessibility a large market with considerable purchasing power exists in metropolitan economies manufacturers of ready made clothing for example may quickly reach consumers because to the well established metropolitan structure socio economic human factors under socio economic factors a capital industries cannot be established without monetary investment as a result capital becomes the most essential factor in the development of industries private or public groups may make capital investments in industries b labor availability automobiles iron and steel industries all rely heavily on labor these industries have grown less labor intensive as technology mechanization and automation have advanced modern industries on the other hand require specialized labor and these occupations are so financially appealing that the workforce will inevitably migrate to the industrial site c government policies and strategies the government's industrial and regional development policies have an impact on the industrial sector Many industries are established in remote places because government programs frequently provide grants, subsidies and tax benefits to businesses who establish themselves in these areas. Industries set up in the backward areas are classified into four broad categories. 4.1 raw material bases. It can be classified into two categories: A agro based and B non agro based. B it's made of minerals. Sugar, jute, textiles, oil and other industries rely on agricultural raw materials. Iron and steel, aluminum and petrochemicals are examples of mineral based businesses. 4.2 according to their products basic industries produce commodities made of iron and steel copper and aluminum such as machines furniture and transportation equipment sugar pharmaceuticals and electrical equipment are examples of consumer sectors that generate commodities that are directly consumed four point three on the basis of capital investment Industries flourish when capital is accessible hence the classification is based on the capital invested to create a manufacturing unit large scale medium scale small scale and cottage businesses can be classified based on the availability of capital or the demand for capital 4.4 as a result of ownership industries are divided into four categories based on who owns them public sector private sector jointly owned industry and cooperative sector Steel Authority of India, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, Damodar Valley Corporation and Bharat Earth Sciences Limited are examples of public sector industries. Private enterprises include Bajaj, Tata's, Reliance and Wipro, which are all owned by private individuals. Joint sector industries have share capital that is owned by both the private and public sectors. For example, co-owned industries include Oil India Limited, Cochin Refineries Limited and Maruti Udyog Limited. Cooperative sector industries are those that are owned and operated by producers, suppliers and workers. Such initiatives include the sugar industry in Maharashtra, the kuwa industry in Kerala and the Amul dairy industry in Gujarat. Agro-based industries are those that rely on agriculture. For example, textile. Textile industries. 
In India's economy, the textile sector is extremely important. Textile exports account for roughly 27% of the country's total foreign exchange and 14% of overall industrial production or about 4% of GDP. The textile industry successfully provides employment to nearly 35 million people. The Indian textile industry is divided into several segments like silk, cotton, woolen, handcrafted, jute, and coir textiles. This textile industry uses a wide range of raw materials which are either natural or man-made. The natural fibers are made from bio-based materials such as plants and animals. The cotton industry in India is one of the most prominent and ancient textile industries. The first cotton mill, which the Indian funds were started in Mumbai in 1854 and eventually Mumbai became a leading center for cotton textiles. Cotton textiles now contribute to about 4% of the GDP of India. Cotton textiles help in striking a balance between tradition and modernity. The spinning occupation is centralized and weaving is exceedingly decentralized, which provides a scope for the traditional skills of craftsmen in cotton, silk sari, and embroidery. The textile production in India is located in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, and West Bengal. Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Coimbatore, Durai, and Indore are considered as important centers for cotton textile industries. The jute industry in India and the jute cultivation is believed to have started in India in around 800 BC for the manufacturing of quadrate paper and cloth. The first jute mill was established on the banks of River Hooghly in 1854. The flourishing of the textiles was observed in India after its independence. The industry employs an enormous number of people. Jute is produced by states such as West Bengal, Assam and Odisha. Nehati and Kolkata of West Bengal have the highest number of jute mills in the country. In 2010 to 2011, there were about 80 jute mills in India. Majority of these were located in West Bengal, mainly along the banks of the Hooghly River within a belt of 98 kilometers, and they were 3 kilometers wide. The national jute policy was formulated in 2005 with the objective of increasing the productivity, improving the quality, ensuring good prices to jute farmers, and enhancing yield per hectare. Woolen Textiles, the first woolen mill in the country, was established in 1876 at Kanpur. This industry is concentrated in Punjab and Amritsar and Ludhiana, which are the key centers for woolen textiles. The chief centers of the woolen textiles are Mumbai, Bangalore, Jamnagar, Kanpur, and Srinagar. The finest wool from Pashmina goats in the Ladakh region is produced by the woolen and the silk industries in India. The Pashmina wool is considered being unique because of its rarity and quality. This wool is used to make gorgeous and warm dress materials. It is also manufactured in the areas of the Leh district, Zanskar in the Kargil district, and the adjoining Lahol Spiti Valley of Himachal Pradesh. India is the largest producer of sugarcane. The sugar industry is largely based on sugarcane as its raw material. The second largest agro industry is the Indian sugar industry. The availability of sugarcane is one of the primary factors on which the production of sugar depends. Since the sucrose content rapidly deteriorates after harvesting, the sugarcane needs to be crushed as soon as it is cut. Therefore, the sugar factories are always situated either in the cane growing areas or within a distance of 25 kilometers from the sugarcane farm. This industry is seasonal in nature. The other byproducts of the sugarcane industry are jaggery, khandasari. There has been a gradual increase in the number of sugar mills in the country. There are 453 sugar mills in India. The cooperative sector has 252 to 256 mills, whereas the private sector has 134 mills and the public sector has about 67 mills. The privately owned sugar industries are mainly situated in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Maharashtra consists of half of the operational sugar cooperative mills. The sugar industry is a lucrative industry and also has helped rural development to a certain extent. In comparison with the southern states, 
The sugar content in the sugar canes that grow in Maharashtra is slightly high. Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Bihar, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh are the leading producers of sugar cane. Now let's discuss something about the mineral based industries. The first mineral based industry we are going to discuss is the iron and steel industry. This industry made its humble beginning in 1870 in Kolte in West Bengal and then later the steel plant was established at Jamshedpur in 1907 and production was established in 1912 in Bihar. This industry has shown sustained growth even after independence. India is one of the largest producers of steel in the world. All the public sector industries except Tata Jamshedpur steel plant market their steel through Steel Authority of India. Iron and steel are considered as heavy goods industries and all the raw materials required are heavy and massive. The raw materials are iron ore, cooking coal, limestone. The location of any industry is always primarily considered with the proximity to its raw materials, predominantly coal in the case of this industry. Since the finished products of this industry are heavy and need an efficient transport system for the distribution of food stuff, These industries are largely concentrated in Chhota Nagpur plateau bordering West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha and Madhya Pradesh. Good huge deposits of good quality iron ore, plenty of cheap labor and good transport network are benefits of having the industry in these regions. Apart from these reasons, three public sector steel plants have been established in Baidala in Odisha, Vijayawada in Andhra Pradesh and Salem in Tamil Nadu. Now let's read about the problems that are encountered in the iron and steel industry. We are unable to draw maximum returns from this sector despite having huge potential in the iron and steel industry due to the following reasons. The cost and limited high grade of cooking coals, cheap labor productivity, irregular power supply, poor infrastructure are the few reasons the iron and steel industry are not flourishing. The next type of industry under the mineral based industry is the aluminum industry. Aluminum is a low weight durable metal with strength and resistance to alteration and electrical conductivity. It is the second most used metal in the world after steel. Bauxite ore is used for aluminum. A country has vast reserves of bauxite. The fifth largest producer of aluminum in the world is India. Aluminum processing industries are in Odisha, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala. The top 5 aluminum producing companies in India are Hindustan Aluminum Company, National Aluminum Company, Bharat Aluminum Company, Madras Aluminum Company and Indian Aluminum Limited. The next classification of industries is the chemical and fertilizer industry. The chemical industry in India is the fourth largest industry and it is also very significant. The chemical industry stands second next to the iron and the steel industry engineering and cotton textiles with respect to size. This industry consists of two branches that is the manufacturer of plastic chemicals and the fabrication of plastic chemicals into several types of goods. This industry has shown rapid growth in the field of organic and organic chemicals. The heavy metal products consists of drugs, dye stuff, pesticides, plastics, paints, etc. Indore, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Kanpur, Kolkata, Mumbai and Vadodara are home to the important centers of chemical industries. The fertilizer industry has a significant role in the development of the agricultural sector of India. First off, as we have read that agriculture is the backbone of the Indian economy, it depends on the type of soil available. A variety of soils are found in India and each has some type of deficiency. This deficiency found makes it mandatory to add some type of fertilizers to improve the fertility of the soil. India is the third largest producer of nitrogenous fertilizers. These nitrogenous complex fertilizers are manufactured in 57 units where 20 units produce urea and 9 units produce ammonium sulfate. Superphosphate is produced in 68 units. Presently there are 10 public sector fertilizer manufacturing units. 
Several fertilizer factories are set up in the country. Places like Nangal, Kanpur, Mumbai, Varanasi, Kota, Vishakhapatnam, Udaipur, Durgapur, Haldia have various large modern fertilizer factories of the country. The Indian pharmaceutical industry holds the third rank in the world's largest industries in the terms of volume. After the government's encouragement to Indian companies and with the Patent Act in 1970, the pharmaceutical industry saw growth. The public sectors were established by the government of India. The Hindustan Antibiotics in 1954 and Indian Drugs and Pharmaceuticals were limited in 1961. The Hindustan Antibiotics Limited was the first company to manufacture antibiotic drugs like penicillin, streptomycin, ampicillin, etc. from the basic stage. Most pharma companies operating in India considering the multinational employed Indians almost exclusively from the lowest ranks to high level management. The number of purely Indian pharma companies is low, but a mix of public and private enterprises are observed. Medical tourism is another factor that has given a new dimension to the pharmaceutical industry. This term medical tourism involves traveling to another country to receive medical, dental and surgical care because the destination enables better access to care, provides high quality care or offers the same treatment at a more affordable price. People from developed and affluent countries are now migrating to their own home countries or other destinations in order to seek solitude, common, natural and holistic remedies and eco-friendly experiences. Pune, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Indore, Kanpur, Chennai, Kolkata, Delhi, Ahmedabad are important centers of the pharmaceutical industry. There are several fertilizer factories in the country. The various large modern fertilizer factories of the country are situated in different places like Nangal, Kanpur, Mumbai, Varanasi, Kota, Vishakhapatnam, Udaipur, Durgapur, Haldia, etc. The number of fertilizer industries is constantly growing and augmenting fertilizer production. Fertilizer production is basically undertaken by the public sector and cooperative sector units. The next type of industry we are going to discuss is the cement automobile and the information technology industries. The cement industries include the manufacturing of cement from clay and limestone. These industries in India are near limestone deposits. Bauxite, gypsum iron oxides are the other raw materials that are used for manufacturing cement. The first cement industry was established in 1904 at Chennai. There are approximately 115 large and 310 mini cement plants in India. India is the second largest producer of cement in the world after China. 20 companies which account for almost 70% of the total cement production have dominated the cement industry in India. Cement plants are observed in India and are concentrated around the northeastern region such as Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, southeastern regions of Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar and eastern parts of Rajasthan. As steel is the basic requirement for manufacturing automobile goods, the industries are set up near iron and steel producing centers. The availability of a ready market is another important factor that is taken into consideration before the setup of any automobile industry. These industries are at the port towns like Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai. Because of the easy facility of the import of automobile parts, availability of skilled as well as unskilled labor, power, banking facilities, limited automobile subsidiary industry, mark and machinery. The automobile industry of India ranks 9th in the largest industries in the world. There are new centers which are set up in Jamshedpur, Jabalpur, Pune, Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Lucknow. Indian information technology plays a major role in placing India on the international map. Its software and facilities, system integration, software experiments, custom application development maintenance have mainly governed the industry. An industrial area is a large area with a noticeable concentration of several industrial entries and this is known as an industrial region. 
Several industrial centers have been established during the past two decades in India. The industrial centers of India are far away from each other. They are usually found around some prominent railway routes. One of the leading industrial centers of the country is Mumbai in India. The deep water harbor facilities in this city have made it possible to import industrial machinery as well as raw materials more conveniently than one city comparatively. Distance between the European country and Mumbai is also relatively less. The fact that the city is well connected with the other parts of the country by airways, railways and roadways has supported the rapid industrialization of Mumbai. Manufacturing of cotton, textiles, commerce synthetic fibers, pharmaceuticals, industrial machinery, automobiles, electrical equipment, plastic and rubber goods, plastic raw material, etc. are the major industries set up in Mumbai. Mumbai is also considered the leading center for the production of petrochemicals and petroleum refining. Industrial machinery, chemicals, electrical equipment, etc. are manufactured near Pune. Some of the major industrial centers of India are Bengaluru, Kolkata, Ahmedabad, Chennai and Coimbatore. A large number of cotton piece goods are produced in Ahmedabad. Textile as well as electrical machinery is also manufactured in Ahmedabad. Fertilizers are manufactured near Baroda. This place also has woolen textiles and mills. Pharmaceutical and chemical products are also produced in Baroda. Several petrochemical complexes for the production of organic chemicals are established here. Chemical industries based on salt have been set up near Oak. The industrial belt near Hooghly in Kolkata is considered a huge textile producing region. Industrial machinery, automobiles, cotton textiles, chemicals, rubber goods, pharmaceutical products are produced in different industrial centers of West Bengal. Some of the valuable products such as machine tools, railway coaches, electrical machinery, aircraft and watches are manufactured in Bangalore. Steel fabricating and metallurgical industries are of considerable significance on the Bihar plateau and in the neighboring parts of West Bengal. High trade iron ore is usually found in abundance near Jamshedpur. The iron and the steel producing plants are established at Jamshedpur, Asansol, Kolovna, Durgapur, Bokoro, Billy. Other popular industrial centers of the country are Kanpur, Ludhiana, Varanasi, Hyderabad, Faridabad, Amritsar, Kota, and Vishakhapatnam. Industries and Environment The major purpose of pollutants is human interest itself. It is people who make a contribution to pollutants inside nature. Science has developed technology and technology has helped human welfare. In this process, pollutants and human miseries have risen. Economic improvement is viable, simplest with the increase of industries. However, with the economic increase, pollutants have additionally surged. Industries are liable for polluting air, water and land. The nature and depth of pollutant, perhaps iron enterprise, in a few enterprises. In a few industries, the pollutants are outrightly seen and substantial. In others, it can be invisible or negligible. Undoubtedly, no enterprise is an iron pollutant. Industries that pollute enormously include chemicals, pesticides, medicines, manufacturing industries, cement steel industries, textile manufacturing and processing industries, petroleum-based industries, paper industries, sugar industries, food industries. Air pollution Air pollution has increased due to the four major events of urban traffic increase intellectual property, economic development, and industrialization. Industry releases air pollutants in the form of steam, smoke, soot, dust, and odors. These pollutants can affect air quality. Pollution can cause damage to forests and buildings and cause health problems such as respiratory diseases. In extreme cases, pollutants can mix with the water vapor. In Figure 1.6.13, Air pollution causes acid rain. Water pollution. The industry also discharges wastewater called industrial wastewater. Water discharged by industry contains chemicals, colorants, color, and odor, etc. 
the effluents contains organic and inorganic compounds organic waste includes waste from food processing industries such as dairy products processing of meat sugarcane etc inorganic wastes include toxic carcinogens detergents heavy metals acids etc the following are some industrial waste water chemical stitch such as sodium nitrate sodium carbonate and hydrazine are used to clean the pipes of power plants of a paper mill containing lignite and liquid from sulfite waste such as plum located in pali palayam industrial belt discharges 508 million liters of sewage into the kaveri river every day thermal pollution steam used in power plants is converted into hot water and discharged into bodies of water this will increase the temperature of the water and seriously damage the marine ecology in addition the industry also releases heat from furnaces boilers etc noise pollution industries that use large machines generate a lot of noise in addition various equipment such as compressors generators air extractors and crushers are also involved in generating a great noise heavy industries like steel shipbuilding automobiles and heavy engineering generate a lot of noise frequent exposure to noise levels over 85 decibels a unit used to measure noise levels can cause hearing loss industrial workers exposed to noise often suffer from various health problems it can cause problems related to hearing blood pressure anxiety tension and headaches reducing work efficiency and psychological stress and can even lead to cardiac arrest control of environmental deterioration The industrial division must include the responsibility for protecting the environment. Recently, the industry has stretched measures to protect our environment. Some steps to be taken by the industry include the best use of resources, minimize waste, configuration of contamination control equipment such as electronic scrubber and precipitant to reduce air pollution, efficient treatment to reduce the configuration of plants, reuse and recycling ideas. it produces awareness among workers reduce noise contamination etc when configuring the muffler to reduce pollution it must be controlled mainly with the source some steps that can be taken are avoid or mitigate pollution with sources reuse residues that cannot be reduced recycle residues that cannot be mitigated or reused by the source reduced reuse or recycled waste must be deleted environmentally safely spills of dangerous goods and accidental releases avoid the loss of raw materials or product losses replace or decrease toxic substances with few harmful substances reduce the amount of harmful waste reduce the amount of waste of solid local governments we promote the prevention of pollution we promote waste and make the policy of acquiring and getting to minimize the impact on natural resources reduce the use of cfc hcfc and halon reduce air emissions minimize contamination using energy saving principles increase water saving adequately manage the management of chemical substances we publish and sell pollution prevention ethics through education and training minimize the use of petroleum derived products by exploring the use of non counterfeit energy sources prevention of pollution of the execution of various laws industries in goa The industry has a compact industrial unit, 5,765 and approximately 16 industrial parks established by Goa Industrial Development Company Limited. Industry in medium scale includes pesticides, fertilizers, mining, tires, tubes, footwear, chemical products, product pharmaceuticals, wheat products, steel rollers, fruits, candies of fish, cashew, textiles, and brewery products. Information technology, IT and ITE industries are very suitable for Goa because of the industry. At the same time, these industries have achieved a virtually conservative demand for valuable resources such as land, electricity and water. These, apart from terracotta and ceramics, brass, metal ceramics, bubura crafts, textile handicrafts, crochet, 
traditional embroidered crafts improves the quality of national resources, the lives of citizens, maintaining an environment of objective pollution. Provides an efficient approval system. Single window system provides thrust in the export oriented industry. Encourages foreign investment in states. Encourage the installation of industries that are not supported and oriented to employment. Seven point two. The characteristics of the Goa industrial policy. The characteristics of the Goa Industrial Policy 2003 announced by the Goa government are fast investment settlement, create industrial parks, roads, energy, water, communications, IT services, etc. Strengthen the human resource base, introduce a new subsidy scheme, tax holidays for new industries. Promote the handicraft industry. With the liberalization of the economy, the state government will focus on the development of the electronics industry, establish an electronic city in the Werner Industrial Zone and an electronic city in Purnam to promote the development of large and medium-sized industries in rural and urban areas to achieve industrial decentralization and reducing unemployment in rural areas. The 16 industrial villages are all in rural areas and are listed as rural industrial villages. There are at least industrial areas in all the talukas in the state. Agriculture-based food processing, including fisheries, electronics, software development, communications, biotechnology, light industrial products, wood carving, auto parts, and industries with a scope or linkages are also promoting culture, flower culture, tissue culture, mushroom culture, also promote processing, and so on. Focus on the development of the tourism industry and the service industry. The salient features of the national industrial policy is the selectivity of the examination and approval of new industries. 7.3 Now that we have read the lesson, let's solve some questions to understand better. So that's it for today. Thank you class and I hope you all had fun learning.